Hi guys, um, so this is just a quick video to kind of briefly explain some of the advice that I have on the whole university application process. Um, I'm by no means an expert on any of this, but this is just some of the advice that I received when I was going through it, so hopefully it helps you guys as well. So the first step in all of this is obviously the personal statement. Now, for me at least, the biggest hurdle that I faced was literally just making a start on it and knowing where to begin with it all. Um, but something that I found really helpful and I definitely recommend doing is to start simply by making a list. So this is a list of things that you think you potentially include in the statement. So the big stuff like work experience, any leadership stuff you've done, charity work, um, generally kind of extracurriculars. But what I think is most important to focus on here is stuff that shows your academic interests. So this is stuff that shows that as an individual you've gone beyond just what's within the curriculum taught at school to really engage with the subject area. Um, so that might be any podcasts that you've listened to, any videos, books, public lectures that you've attended, any conferences, stuff that really shows your interest for the subject. So once you've got a rough idea of some of the content you might want to include, the next step is to start thinking about the actual structure of the personal statement. Now, I don't think there's any kind of set way of structuring it, and I think different people have different opinions on how you should go about it. Um, for me, at least, because I was applying for a degree that consisted of three different disciplines, it kind of made sense for me just to reflect that in the structure of my statement and have different paragraphs assigned to the different disciplines and different subject areas. Um, but obviously, that's going to be different depending on the degree that you're applying for. What I think is also important to consider here is the fact that some universities have particular preferences when it comes to the format of the personal statement. Um, not all have a preference, but I think some universities are known for preferring um, a stronger focus on academic interests over extracurriculars. So definitely consider that and that's something to look into. I don't think it's important to necessarily cater your personal statement to any one university because obviously you're applying for five at the same time. But definitely consider that. And I think some universities have a particular page on their websites dedicated to advice on the personal statement um, and if that's something you're particularly curious about a good way of going about um, looking more into that would be to contact and reach out to current students who are at universities you're thinking of applying to um, who are studying the courses that you're interested in just to kind of get some advice on how they formatted theirs what kind of stuff they included um, and draw inspiration from that so the biggest piece of advice that I think I can give on this whole personal statement process is simply to try and convey your passion and interest for the subject it sounds really simple but I think it's one of the main things they're actually looking for in the personal statements that they're reading so you want to show that you're not only someone who is interested in the subject and willing to learn, but also someone who's going to critically engage with the material that they're teaching. So one way of trying to convey your interest for the subject is to try and find your own kind of niche or some sort of topic area within the subject that you can focus on to make you stand out. So for me, that came in the form of post-genocide Rwanda, which I know is a super, super random topic, but it was something that I was just really interested in at the time. And because I was applying for politics, philosophy and economics, I found a way to link those three disciplines to this particular conflict and the aftermath of it. If you're struggling to find some sort of topic area to focus on within your statement, I definitely suggest just looking online. There's so many different resources out there, whether it be public lectures um, that have been recorded, um, any books, podcasts, just keep looking and I'm sure you'll find something that can spark your interest and use as inspiration. In terms of kind of smaller pieces of advice that I received when I was going through it, um, first of all, try and avoid using big flowery language. Um, if anything, you're just going to be cutting into your word count and they're going to be reading a bunch of statements at once. So they just want someone that's going to be really clear and get to the point. So just be quite concise. At the same time, show you're someone who's quite eloquent, but do it in a really kind of clear, concise manner and try and not eat into your word count. Second of all, I definitely think it's important not to get too many opinions on your personal statement. Obviously, I definitely suggest giving out your statement to different teachers or family members just to get their advice on it and try and improve your personal statement. But I think it can get to a point where it gets a little bit too overlaid with other people's opinions um, because obviously everyone has their own suggestions and approaches to how you should write it and what things you should include. But I think it's very important to keep the essence of it as you because at the end of the day, it is a personal statement and it is about your own opinion, your own experiences and why you think you're going to be suitable for the course. So get opinions on it, try and improve it through other people, but be careful with getting too many suggestions because it can become a little bit overloaded. My final piece of advice is to remember quality over quantity. Now, I know that's something that's really cliche and everyone always says, but it's very, very true in this case. I think a lot of people 
accidentally get in the habit of just listing a bunch of things rather than actually saying the impact that that's had on them. So don't just list a bunch of books that you've read or a bunch of videos or lectures that you've been to, but instead talk about the impact that's had on you. So why that makes you a really great candidate for the course, but also why that particular experience or book has made you wanna pursue the subject at degree level. So the next thing I'm gonna be talking about is the whole process of shortlisting universities to apply for. Now, as expected, you're probably gonna get a bunch of different opinions and viewpoints from friends, family members, parents, teachers, on which universities you should be applying for. And obviously take their advice into consideration, but I think what's really important to remember is that this is where you're gonna be spending the next three, potentially four years of your life learning. So it really needs to come from your own personal decision and you need to think about the criteria that you think is important to you when shortlisting these universities. So something you're definitely going to hear quite a lot of is the whole university rankings thing. Um, so a lot of people decide where to apply depending on where a particular university falls on this list that's been made online every year. In my opinion, I don't think it's the most important thing that you should be considering. If you are interested in looking at rankings, I definitely suggest looking more so into the departmental rankings, which basically just separates this list into particular departments that you can then compare the universities on. Um, but like I said, I don't think it should be the be all and end all or the main thing that you consider when deciding on where to apply. So a big thing to consider is obviously the location of the actual university, because this has direct implications on whether you get to move out or stay at home for the next three or four years. Um, some people tend to actually rule out going to a university near them altogether because they think that living out is an important part of the whole university process. Whereas other people do the complete opposite and think that It'd be better to actually live at home and go to a university near them because it makes more sense financially. Um, I see both sides and I think it's important to consider both options um, but it really does come down to personal preference and what you think is going to work best for you and what you think is important. Um, personally I applied to three London universities and two that were outside of London and location wasn't the most important factor for me, it was more about the actual quality of the university and the degree itself. Um, and it just so happens that because I was accepted into a London university, I made the decision to live out for first year only. Um, obviously it was a really big decision financially, but genuinely I just couldn't stomach the idea of having to stay at home for the next four years without getting at least one year to experience uni life. And it definitely isn't something I regret and I really, really loved and recommend looking into. Um, I know that some universities offer bursaries and scholarships so definitely consider that if it's something that worries you financially and you do want to live out first year and go to a university that's near you um, but at the same time I know a lot of people that went to London universities and lived at home and still had an amazing experience so I don't think you're necessarily missing out on anything by living at home. So one of the most important things to consider and for me was the most important thing that I think that a lot of people tend to forget about is the actual degree itself. So different universities will have different approaches to teaching and will structure a particular degree program very differently depending on where you go. So I think what's important to remember is that you're not gonna be learning the exact same thing in every single university on a particular degree program. So it's important to look at what different modules a university offers, whether there's flexibility in terms of outside options, um, an opportunity to add on a language potentially, placement years, um, years abroad. So really consider what different universities have to offer and what is important to you in terms of the topics that you wanna learn about because it's all too well going to a really, really great uni, but if you're not actually enjoying the course you're studying, then what's the point really? If you're still struggling with where to apply, I definitely suggest reaching out to current university students who may be at the universities that you're thinking of applying to. Because what this can be really, really great in doing is getting a first-hand perspective on what the university is actually like. So you can kind of better gauge what the actual vibe of the university is, what the social life is like, um, what the teaching styles are like. And I think what's a really important thing to consider is the actual support systems in place for students at the university because I think a really big thing that universities tend to lack in is their support for student well-being and mental health so if that's something that matters to you definitely consider looking into it and asking current students what their experiences have been. So once you've finally sent off all your applications and finally heard back from all the universities the final decision to make is which unis you want to firm and insurance. So your firm university is the main uni you want to go to and that's the one you officially accept the offer of and then your insurance is kind of like your backup plan. Again this is a really personal decision to make and I think everyone has their own individual things they need to consider but what I think is really important is to once again bring it back to what matters to you most and the criteria you've used to shortlist the universities in the first place and second of all again having those conversations with your teachers about ways in which you can be both aspirational and realistic in the decision that you make. 
So that was just kind of a brief overview of some of the advice that I have on the whole university application process. Um, again, I'm definitely no expert in all of this and it's by no means an exhaustive list of all the potential advice you could receive, but hopefully it was a helpful starting point. Um, I definitely say don't stress too much over it. It's obviously a really stressful time as it is with exams coming up, um, but just make sure you're putting yourself and your mental well-being first and really prioritizing the things that matter to you most when you're making these big decisions. Um, so yeah, good luck.